Let's face it, life can be stressful. Whether it's starting a new job, planning a wedding, or even a last minute bake sale at your kid's school. Every now and then, we all need to find a space to take a little breather, to clear our minds, and get back into the groove. Your happy place, if you will. So welcome to my happy place. Are you ready to find bliss? Did you ever do this as a kid? Any sort of challenge to walk along a, a ledge, you would jump at it, even though it was really far down below? Well, the Cliff Walk in Newport, Rhode Island may be the perfect place for you to find your bliss. The Cliff Walk is a public access walk that combines the natural beauty of the Newport shoreline with the architectural history of Newport's Gilded Age. You see, this picturesque three and a half mile trail attracts visitors from around the world. I'm here because my aunt, aunt recommended me to visit this place and it looks very gorgeous. You know, the buildings are similar to the European style. The stories behind all the mansions behind the cliff walk and if you go to any of the mansions, you're able to go back as far as their property line goes and they'll tell you all the history behind, you know, the people who lived here. When they did all the mansions along the cliff walk, they, the fishermen's rights were very, very strong. Fishermen really needed to feed their family, so they kept the walk open. As they built the mansions, they still re left a part of it or a path. The servants would come out of the mansions at night, and the only place they had to gather was along the cliff walk. It's not very touristy, that's what I like. It's not overdeveloped. It's just really nice, the, the flora, the fauna, the ocean. It's wonderful. Very healthy for you. The air here, you've got to breathe the air by the sea. It's terrific. I advise anyone to come out here and walk this. And I tell everyone, there is no place like Newport. It's the most unique place in the country that I know of. It's astonishing, if not downright inspiring, the number of wildflower species that grow across our great country. Every region seems to have its favorites. If you've followed me here at Moss Mountain Farm over the years, you know that a priority early on was to help encourage and conserve our native wildflowers. Some of my favorites include the tick seed or Coreopsis, the black-eyed Susans, as well as the Indian blanket flowers. Once found only in meadows and fields, wildflowers can now be found in home gardens, landscape designs, and certainly along our nation's highways and roadsides. A proponent of this movement, Lady Bird Johnson, spent her life dedicated to educating people about the environmental necessity of native plants, encouraging all to recognize the natural beauty of our country and bring it into our daily lives. Lady Bird's good friend, philanthropist Margaret McDermott, a fellow Texan with a heart as big as her state, is continuing to lead the way. At 102 years old, Margaret's a living legend in her own right. Her generosity and commitment to land conservation and to saving these native species is just one more way her legacy continues to inspire others. Margaret, what was it about this particular place that really caught your eye and Mr. McDermott's eye? Well, we were there in the spring so long ago, 75 years ago, and we could have had our choice of any place. The farmers were eager to sell, and they wanted to sell, and they wanted to move to the city. Well, we saw this place in the spring 75 years ago, and the one thing that was wonderful for me was a wildflower. Yes. A wonderful fields of wildflowers. And they were so beautiful in color that I got off and said, this is it. <laughs> and he said, this is it. 
Dave, what a beautiful time of year to be here in northern Texas, all these wildflowers blooming. Now, this is a great time. May is a, a beautiful time for us. Early spring wildflowers are done, but these May wildflowers really mm. rival what we have in the early spring. Well, I'm just seeing so much in the way of these, these yellow composites out here across the meadow. Looks like a type of daisy. This is an Engelman daisy, a really nice one, really tall, upright, really bright. You really can see it from a distance. You sure can. It's beautiful. Everything's just naturally occurring. There's never been a wildflower seeded here uh, artificially. So what you see in this beautiful uh, prairie land here are things that are naturally occurring. And this is one of the last large undeveloped pieces of land here just north of Dallas in the suburbs, a beautiful 350-acre tract that uh, has never been developed, and it's still the, uh, the natural prairie fields that you would have seen many, many years ago. In those days, in those early days, 75 years ago, Collin County had a population of a few thousand. Mm. Now, my town of Allen has a population of many thousand. Yes. There's a lot of development. It's completely surrounded, the property. Completely surrounded. Conserving these species in the face of an ever-expanding human population is a constant challenge. And unfortunately, it's believed that over 4,000 native plant species are in danger of vanishing forever. You know, really, the preservation of tracts of land like this uh, ha have really never been more important than they are today. That's so true. You know, without these tracts of land, a lot of these migratory species, birds and insects, won't have a place to, uh, to, to, to move you know, north and south. Each right, year. right, because they have to stop along the way and feed or reproduce. That, that's so true, or a place where you know, they need water, those things that you would find in these open tracks. So, sure. And this track that we're on right now is just filled with this milkweed, this naturally occurring one that, that, that grows in this I part see of it, yeah, so these little tufts of sort of light green flowers. It's, it's like basically a green flowered version of the milkweed, but so important, and they can lay their eggs so the caterpillars can uh, feed, and then that forms the next butterfly as they keep moving south or moving north each right. year as yes. they migrate. And this track is so important, this land is gonna be gifted to the city of Allen to be a part of our, our future bike hike trail, preserving all the, the field and the creek line, allowing really? all our hikers and bikers uh, north of uh, the property here, south all the way to the city of Dallas to be able to have connectivity. So it's an important part, preserving this beautiful creek. Uh, and the McDermott family has given this gift. How marvelous. To the folks of North Texas. And so That's this beautiful. piece will, will, will finish off this important connection that you need from one destination to the it other. It will, part of the larger master plan for several uh, cities and counties uh, as we connect uh, with bikes and hike trails. So just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to have that happen here. Oh, that is so progressive and this will be a, a piece of land that people will be able to enjoy for generations to come. That's right. You've been very generous with the property from the very beginning. Well, we were proud of it and wanted to share it and that's certainly what my husband wanted to do. We deserve to give the land a legacy of protection. You know, you look across this meadow and the subtlety and the brilliance of these wildflowers makes you realize why people are beginning to think differently about their front yards, for instance, and why not make them a wildflower meadow? That's right, it could be a home for all sorts of important uh, insects and birds and creatures, so it's a lot you can do. To keep this beautiful open space just as it is, is a gift, because people can see nature as nature's meant to be and I think that that improves their lives. I hope so. We certainly need more trees, more flowers, more grass, more place for children, and I think for me, I want other people to enjoy a spring like I've enjoyed it, and I hope that they learn from it like I've learned from it. Well, thank you for, for allowing us to be here and continuing to be an inspiration for, for not only me, but for everyone who recognizes what you've done with this beautiful place and continues to do and will continue to do with the legacy. And I'm proud of what people all over Texas and Arkansas and the world 
that they really know that open spaces, beauty, quality, must be protected for every citizen in your state, my state, our nation. So why not try growing a few native wildflowers yourself? You can make your garden very beautiful and just think about what you're going to do to conserve the plant as well as support some of those beneficial insects. And another thing to think about is be conscious of your own legacy. Conserve nature and its beauty right at home. No matter what the weather is doing outside, to get your daily dose of the garden, you can always create a little oasis in your bathroom. You see, so many of the plants that thrive in tropical areas are perfect for the bathroom because of all of the warmth and moisture and humidity that comes from your shower and bath. It's really simple to create your own personal little garden indoors, but there are a few things you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind. For instance, mirrors are very helpful. You see, they reflect lots of light. And hey, your plants love light. And the way I look at it, the more light you have, the more plants you can have, and that's a good thing. You'll also wanna turn your plants regularly to avoid uneven growth. And you don't wanna overwater. Too much love can kill them. You see, the room's high humidity will help keep your plants damp. Oh yeah, and this is an important one. I don't recommend using any glass containers where bare feet are at risk. So go for containers that are made of of plastic or a resin or some sort of composite, even wood or metal. Ah, now let's get to some of the plants. Some of my favorites include aloe vera, begonia, Boston fern, well, really all kinds of ferns, cast iron plant, Chinese evergreens, orchids, peace lilies, spider plants, diffenbachia, those all work well in low light bathrooms, but if you have a really sunny bathroom, you might consider asparagus fern, even a gardenia. Then of course, you need to feed your plants to keep them happy. I recommend feeding only when they're in a growth cycle. In other words, spring through summer and begin to back off during the fall and don't feed them in the winter months. So come rain or shine, you can create a little indoor oasis that will make you and your plants very happy. Who doesn't want that perfect sanctuary or getaway? And what if you could actually get it for free? That's why we're here in Bakersfield, California, because Kelly Ash entered a contest for Laguna Ponds for a complete makeover. I'm Kelly. I live in Bakersfield, California. I have two kids, Mallory, who is six, and Wyatt, who is nine. Right now, everything in my backyard is demolished, and they are making me a new pond. So they're going to be redoing my entire backyard. Kelly is a single mom, and that's difficult to raise two kids on your own. Um, but in all of that, she's always the person in our family to think about somebody else. She is there for her kids 24-7, whether it's at the ball game, at the school, making cookies, going to visit the kids at the classroom. She's always involved with those kids. She's a great mom. She works for a pediatric dentist, so she's with children all day long. To be able to go into her backyard and, and listen to that beautiful uh, sound of water from the water feature is just going to be fabulous for her. With the pond finished, that's a matter of filling it up with water and turning on the waterfall. The guys did a great job on this.
Mike, it's just phenomenal how this feature has transformed this space. It is, isn't it, Alan? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really pleased with the way everything's turned out and, and with the minimal amount of time that we were able to do this. Yeah, I mean, uh, what, what did this take, five hours? Uh, approximately five hours, yeah. And Man. it was myself and, and two other guys helping to work. And we're talking from digging the hole, planning everything out, to putting in the liner, placing the rock, getting our filtration system and, and waterfall in place, cleaning it and filling it with water. We were able to complete this in, in less than five hours. What, what an addition to this area. And you know, it's such a small space. I mean, from the house to the fence, you only have eight feet. It is, Alan, yes. With, with some creativity, this is, this is something that you could do yourself. The thing that I find so relaxing about this is the, the sound of the water. You can create different sounds with it just, yeah. by, just by placing rocks in different areas like, That's like what we I'm were doing, doing here. here. Yeah, you can, you I can mean, you change can, uh, the, the effect. You can change the whole sound and effect. And this is something that you can do at any time. I mean, you can just put that rock there if you want a little more noise. If you want it back to the way it was, you can take that rock out. And that's that's the creativity of, of having something like this in your yard. You know, it just makes you feel happy to have have this sort of success in, in really, your backyard that does. you can see every and day. And to bring happiness to other people like this and doing what we do, uh, absolutely. With the fountain in place, which is the centerpiece of the garden, now it's time to, well, get started on the landscape, add some of those beautiful plants. Let's get going. So Kelly, here we are. It's time for the big reveal. Everybody's worked so hard, but you know, I think this is gonna be the perfect little sanctuary for you. All right, so ready? Three, two, one, take a look. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. It's quite a transformation. Holy cow, it really is. I love it, I love it. I'm so glad I entered that contest on Facebook. I would have never <laughs> dreamed I would have won, and I did, and look at what I got. This I is know. unbelievable. It's really great. Kelly, this was a total team effort. We couldn't have done it without, well, guys from Manji and from Laguna. Come on Absolutely. out, guys. I want you all to meet Kelly, and Kelly, this is Dan Manji. Kelly, I'm hoping you Landscaper it. extraordinaire. Kelly, how are you? Hi. And Mike from Laguna who orchestrated this beautiful water awesome. piece. Thank you guys, you did such a wonderful job. This is amazing. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank You're you. Welcome. I hope you enjoy it for, I will. for a long, long time. I will, it was thank our pleasure. you. Would you like to create your own backyard oasis? Why not start with a customized water feature? They're so lovely and it's super easy and the possibilities, well, they're endless. You know, Chris, it's been fun getting crazy and creative with these water features. Yeah, there's a lot of different <laughs> things we can do. I mean, wandering around and just found this old ice cream maker and decided to turn it into a we, had, we hadn't used this thing in years, <laughs> so it's, it's perfect. I just love it. If you're worried about it leaking, all you have to do is take one of these rubber liners and make sure it's filled in, and then, you know, the ingredients are pretty basic. Right. I mean, we're using some of this uh, river rock, which you can buy by the bag. Not that expensive to do, and uh, a pump inside, and 
We're ready to turn this thing on. Yeah, let's let's give it a try. Now the size pump that you used here in this one is what size? This 185. It's about 185 gallon an hour pump. Just something small. Right. Uh, just to again create that sound of water. And look at this one. An ordinary clay pot. Took a, just a plain clay pot, some epoxy, a two-part epoxy that we molded and stuffed into the bottom of it to, to block up the hole. Place a brick, or a, we, in this case, we used another small terracotta pot upside down. Put the pump on top and added some water lettuce, and now we've got a little water garden and a little, again, small decks, patios, uh, balconies. Yeah. And look at this. Yeah, again, you know, we're wandering around the, uh, the farm, and here we find an old wash tub and an yeah. old watering can that <laughs> right. galvanized watering cans we don't see used as too much anymore, I don't think. Uh, well, now, this is when I thought you got really creative in the way that you attached the watering can to the wash tub. Yeah, we just ran to the hardware store, and we found a 12-inch piece of galvanized pipe, a couple of washers or nuts from uh, electrical department, Ran our tubing up through here off of the uh, the pump. Again, we're using about a 200 gallon an hour pump on this. Right. And uh, a couple of uh, clamps with self-tapping screws. We could even later on add a light. There's LED lights that you could put a light in here so at night yeah. it's illuminated. Yeah, adds so much, doesn't it? Yeah, with that water movement in the metal, the, the shimmer off the metal would be really pretty to see that light uh, there at night. Three different styles here. But the piece de resistance has to be <laughs> this over here. I just love what you've done with this. But Chris, this is the one where I think you really knocked the ball out of the park. We took the metal wash tub, built a frame behind it just out of scrap wood we found. Right. Covered it with some of uh, a pond liner that we had left over from one of your ponds. Now let's um, talk about the, the water source itself because across the top here you have a horizontal bar with a series of, it's perforated so you get this constant flow of water, the wall of water. Right, we just took PVC and a can of black spray paint, drilled holes in it where every square was gonna fall so you'd have water running down each square. Yeah, I see that, right. And uh, attached with a pipe hanger across the top, connecting to our pump that sits down inside. Very creative, my friend. Well, thank you, and like I say, it's, it's just look around, see what you've got at your own, in your home, and you can be able to develop any kind of a fountain. Yep, as Use long as magic. you've got something that'll hold water, you can go from there. Right. Yeah, excellent. One of my favorite places here at the farm is this natural water feature. I love to come here and hear the sound of the water and watch the fish swimming back and forth. And from time to time, I give them a little food like this. It's one of those places where I can completely relax. Now this is the end of the show, so I hope it doesn't cause you to get anxious and stressed out. We'll have another one coming up soon. Until next time, I hope this show has inspired you to get out there and find your happy place and discover your bliss. For Garden Home, I'm Alan Smith. Come and get it. Step over. Okay. Again? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. walk a little bit further. Yeah. Over this one too. Yeah, there's yeah. one more right okay, here. There's one more. Watch step, there. Up, step over. Yeah. Perfect. And there we go. Don't turn around on the first one. Okay. Okay. I'm good at following rules. All right, everyone okay? Everyone stand by. And action. I think you're going to love it. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Take a look. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. It's quite a transformation. Holy cow. It really is. I love it. I love it.